Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. We're, we're ministering on the subject of uh, Vic, the life of victorious faith. Amen? Or victorious living. And um, we talked about some points here. First one was uh, recognizing the source of your problem. Who's the source of your problem? The devil. Now listen, directly or indirectly, all right? You know, if you got a cold, don't mean you got to have the devil cast out. But ultimately, the source of that is, is Satan or his kingdom. So when we say that, that's what we're referring to. We're not saying that every time something's bad, there's actually a demon present. But Satan is the source of it. Okay? So, you've got to recognize who your enemy is in order to deal with it. Secondly, you're, um, we've got to, in, in that same point, you've got to recognize the source of your answer. Who's the source of your answer? Jesus. All right. Next was be sure the promises of God cover the things you ask for. You've got to have scripture. Third was be sure you're not living in sin. Some people don't like that, but that's still the truth. Um, next, be sure no doubt or unbelief is permitted in your life. Then we said society, sincerely desire to benefit. Next was ask God in faith, nothing wavering. Then don't tolerate a thought to the contrary. Last week we said count the thing done. And now we're going to talk about the last two points. Maybe we'll get through both of them today. Is next is looking at Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, is give glory to God. I think one of the things that we're missing a lot of times is a heart of thanksgiving and gratefulness. Amen? Hallelujah. A heart of thanksgiving and gratefulness. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says, be careful or don't be anxious. Really was what it, what the, the import of what it means. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. It is important that as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, as those who live by faith, that we have a heart of thanksgiving. It is, it is so easy. It, take, it takes no effort, but it, it, it really is easy to come to the point in our life that we complain or grumble or gripe about what we don't have, what hadn't happened, why hasn't it happened, you know, and, and have all kinds of, of, you know, grumbly, gripey attitudes. We're even asking, God, I need $1,000, and why hadn't you done it yet? Dad, gummit, so-and-so has got this, and so-and-so, and I don't have anything yet. Amen. It's easy to get there. But the Bible says that with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. You know? So we need to give thanks. And, and let me say this. Thanksgiving is birthed out of a grateful heart. Amen. You need to be grateful to God that he's doing what he said he would do in your life. Well, I hadn't seen it yet. See, so you're not going to see it. Let your, if you're going to, your thanksgiving, there it says here, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. When does the thanksgiving come? Before or after you get the answer? Before, how do you know? Well, it says here that you, you pray and you, and you supplicate with thanksgiving as you're making the request known. So that's before the answer comes. Amen? So that means you're thanking God, you have the answer. Your thanksgiving is the faith. We talked about this the other week. Faith is the substance or guarantee or title deed to the things you hope for, the evidence of things not seen. Remember, we read, we read out of the Amplified the other week. And faith sees as, re, as, as reality that which we can't see, that we, we don't have yet. Amen? And so he says here, Paul writing to the church at Philippi, says, be careful. Don't be anxious. You got to possess your souls. You have to possess your souls in the realm of faith. You have to, you know, look at the next verse here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. He that's entered into faith has entered into rest. Now, let me say this rest or ceasing from your own human efforts. Not from the effort or the walk or the work of faith, of being doers of the word. 
In other words, you're counting on your ability to get the job done. When you know, you're, you're trusting the power of God, and you're trusting in faith, and you're working the word. Amen. Did you know, have you ever thought about how James said this? That he being a doer of the work. Didn't say being a doer of the word, but being a doer of the work. Amen. Well, wow, because faith is there, there is there is action to faith. There is there is working faith. Amen. But he says here, he says, when you pray and you supplicate and have thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Then he says, the peace of God will keep you. It'll keep your mind. Amen. So when you've entered into faith about something, there's a grateful heart because you already received the answer in your spirit. There should be thanksgiving for the answer. Now, now how, how are we trained in the natural? We're trained to be thankful when we see it. And somebody might go, well, Jesse, Jeff, I'll give you $100. He'll say, and he'll say, well, praise the Lord. But there's almost, there's almost in the natural this little hedge that I might go, yeah, but you know what? I, I, when I see it, I'll believe it because you've, you've known people. Now, when they come up and slap the hundreds in your hand, you'll go, whoa, thank you. Amen. See, that's natural. And a lot of times it's because we don't trust people. We don't trust their word. We don't believe them. We, we don't have any, any reason to believe them. There's no confidence in what they said. So we really don't have faith. We hope it's true, but we don't have any faith. So that's where we got to be different with the things of God. God is faithful. Amen. He's not a man that he should lie. But his promises, all the promises of God in him are yea and, and, and through our amen, they acknowledge the truth to the glory of God in us. Amen. How many of you ever grew up in church and heard this? God answers prayer three ways. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, and sometimes maybe. So one, one of the person I heard say it says, oh, wait a little bit. But you know, uh, Paul wrote to the church and said this. He said all the promises of God in him are yes. And our amen, amen, acknowledges the truth of, of it to the glory of God in us. Amen? So King James says, in him, yea, and in him, amen. But really, it's, 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 it's God says yes to his word. And when we say amen, it means so be it. Hallelujah. Then, then it works. Amen? Hallelujah. So here Paul's writing to the church and make, letting them understand, don't be anxious. But when you pray and you supplicate, offer up thanksgiving as you make that request known unto God. Lord, Lord I, I thank you that according to 1 Peter 2.24, I'm healed. I call myself the healed of the Lord because it says by his stripes I was healed. And so, Lord, I receive my healing according to the word of God. I receive it according to 1 Peter 2.24, by his stripes I was healed. Matthew 8.17 says that it, the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy, that by his stripes we were healed. When Jesus healed the sick, you're talking about feeling, uh, physical infirmities and physical, physical disease. <laughs> It's Pentecost. Hallelujah. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. All over again. Today is Pentecost. Glory to God. Amen. But according to first, uh, Matthew 8, 17, the prophecy of Isaiah, when his bias writes, we are healed. Matthew 8, 17 makes it clear. He's talking about physical diseases and ailments. So, Father, I thank you that I'm the healed of the Lord. And now I just honor you and I have to give you thanksgiving. Lord. Thank you that Jesus healed my body. Thank you that Jesus bore my sickness. Thank you that Jesus carried it to the cross. I just want to come with thanksgiving that you honor your word and you do what you said you did. So now you're giving thanksgiving before you ever see an answer. Manifest it. You've received the answer by faith. And you're thanking him for the received answer by faith. Amen? So if you're going to live in faith, you're going to have to live with thanksgiving before you ever see it. So you're, you're already running and shouting and glorifying God. You got the answer. Amen. When do you do it? When you made the request known. I said when you made the request known. Thanksgiving is the song of faith. Y'all hear? I said Thanksgiving is the song of faith. The, the song of victory of faith. Faith has a song, and it's thanksgiving. Amen? Glory to God. Now, we're not thanking him for the disease. We're not thanking him for the calamity. We're not thanking him for the problem. We're thanking him for the answer. Glory to God. I have a grateful heart. 
that in the midst of the trial, in the midst of the tribulation, his word says one thing, they, the, the, the problem may say one thing, but God's word says another. And I'm going to take God's word over the problem or the circumstance and offer unto God thanksgiving, glory to God. Aren't y'all glad I came to church today? You can go home right now and have a whole week's worth of stuff to study. Amen. Glory to God. And so thanksgiving comes, and then with, along with that thanksgiving, we need to move on. We're going to add Titus next point into it. That as we give glory to God, you start acting as though you received it. In other words, you act as though you got it. Well, that's part of the thanksgiving. Look over to Mark eleven twenty four. 24. People on Facebook just found out from Shannon that faith... The song of faith, of victory, is thanksgiving. Just showed it right up on my feet, right across my screen. Shannon said, did you take credit for that? Why didn't you say Pastor Ed said? Oh, okay. Hallelujah. You tagged me. All right. I guess I need to turn off the Wi-Fi when I'm doing No, I can't because I won't be able to get my notes. <coughs> All right. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, what things serve you desire? When you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. Now we just talked about here, giving glory to God, that the song of, of, of faith, the song of faith is a victory. The song that comes out of that is a song of thanksgiving. Here in Mark eleven twenty four 24, he says, What things serve you desire? When you pray, believe you receive them. You got to count the thing. You got to begin to act like it's so. Amen? You got to go ahead and act like you got it. Uh, act as though you ever see. Now remember over in Genesis chapter 17 verse 5, God said, You should no longer be called Abram, but thou shalt be called Abraham, for a father of many nations I have made thee. Now Abram was 99 years old when God called him Abraham. And he had to go down to the city gate and say, tell all these young whippersnappers, don't call me Abraham, Abram anymore. My name is Abraham which meant father of many nations. And that you got to know that the 21-year-olds started going, look at the old geek. He's going to see now. He thinks he's going to have babies. Yep. You got to know that's what was going on. He said, don't call me Abram. Call me Abraham. I'm the father. <clears throat> so all of a sudden, everybody starts calling him Abraham. He's like, every time he hears it, the father of many nations. Hey, Abraham, father of many nations. Abraham, why is God? Abraham, father of many nations. He's hearing it yes. constantly. You got to hear, you got to hear the pronouncements of the receiving of what you believe God for. Act, let me say this, the number one way to act on as if you have received is to say it. Now, sometimes there's other things you have to do, but the number one way is to say it. You've got to say what you what you're believe in you got. How many know we can say what we got already? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen? Now, this point's based on all the things we've already said. You've got to have promises, you know. You, got, you understand that. We've got to have the right confession, but we're, we're start, we start acting as though we have what we've already gotten scripture for. We've kept the sin out of our life. All these other things work together. All, they're all built on the, on, together, not an individual principle. It's a combined set of principles we put into operation. And, 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 and this, as it were, a checklist to make sure that certain things are working and certain things are, are right in our life. But here in the end, you begin to act as if you got what you said what you're believing for. You begin to act on it. You begin to believe it. You, get, you get, begin to demonstrate it. Hallelujah. Now, again, let's uh, stop here. A number of years ago, at, uh, uh, well, Dad Hagen had two guys working for him, Mark Brzee and, uh, and Doug Jones. Now, Mark Brzee's been in our church a number of times, and then the Doug Jones is the, is the uh, head of RMAI, Works has worked for Brother Hagen and li actually lived with Dad Hagen when he was in at Raymond for a couple of years. And um, Brother Doug, uh, we count him as a dear friend, uh, as and even even as our overseer uh, in our in our positions. But he's, he's just he's just a marvelous minister. But they were out traveling with Dad Hagen, and there was two girls back at school who who got a hold of just a little bit. See, here's where you can get in trouble. Yeah. They were going to act their faith, but they didn't go get back and get scripture to stand on what they were standing on. 
They were trying to say, you can have what you say. Well, see, you can have what you say as long as the Word of God promises it. Now, the one thing the Word of God didn't promise them was those specific gentlemen. Now, he finds a wife, finds a good thing. You know, you can start believing God that God will send you a godly husband or a godly wife, but you can't start labeling somebody for your husband or wife. Yeah, sorry, Nathan. <laughs> Unless they're in agreement with it. See, that, that's where another person's will gets involved. You can't, you can't override their will. Well, these girls started claiming, you know, one of them claimed uh, Brother Doug, one of them claimed Brother uh, um, Mark as their husband. One of them went out as so far as to buy the wedding dress and send out invitations to the wedding. And they, they called and said, look, we're not interested. You know, we, we went out a couple of times. You know, it, was, it was nice to go out and have dinner or whatever. We're not interested in, the, in that type of relationship going that direction. And the people back in, in Tulsa would go, they, they, see the, they got the letter from him and they say, what did it say? Well, he said this, but I don't receive that in Jesus' name. Well, one of two things. One is they were being foolish, or two, they didn't have enough faith. How do you know? Because neither one of them got married to those guys. Amen? No. See, when you're counting the thing done, it's based on all these other things we've already said. Amen? And one of those is you've got to have promises from the Word of God to stand on. They were just being, they were being nutso. And I think, I, think, I think they got straightened out later, but at the time, now it's, well, you shouldn't tell us. Dad Hagen, he's told the story for years. That's where I got it from. Hallelujah. <laughs> he go, he go, ain't that right, Doug? Ain't that right, Mark? I mean, he just, you know, he just thought, he thought it was funny. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you see, you start counting the thing done and you haven't done the other principles. Well, you know, find scripture. You just can't take, you can have what you say and use that as a blanket all for everything. Why? The Bible says out of, every, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established. Amen. You just can't take, you can have what you say and run off. And that whatever you decide you won't, just say, I have what I say. And there's nothing else to support it. There's no other biblical principle to support what you're doing. There's no other word that supports what you're doing. You're just saying, you know, whatever comes up in your little mind, you oh, I got it, hallelujah. Well, you'll, you'll be sorely disappointed a lot of times in your life. We don't want to be disappointed, do we? We want to be, we want to be victorious. So, <clears throat> so he says here, therefore I, say, you know, um, therefore I say unto you what things shall ye desire. When you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Well, haven't we talked about the fact that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God? That, does, that godly desire, word of God desires are birthed out of what the word of God teaches you can have. Find scripture for what you're believing God for. When you do that and when you desire it and you, and you confess it and you pray and you believe that you receive it, praise God. Amen? And you're giving thanks, giving to God for it. You can't thank God for stuff but his word doesn't promise you or he hadn't promised you. Amen? You can't count the thing done when there's no basis for faith. But when you have the basis for faith, when you've done these other things, when, you're, when, you're, when, it's, when it's a matter of what the word of God teaches you and you're believing, you're, now you can count the thing done. Why? Why can you count it done? Because he's faithful that promised. What God promised you, you can count it as done because he will honor his word and do what he said he would do. He will not lie to you. I said God will not lie to you. I said God will not lie to you. Some people say, well, God's sovereign. He can do whatever he wants to. He won't lie. How do you know he won't lie? Because Satan's the father of liars and for God to lie would subordinate himself to Satan. And you can't call it sovereign. It can't, call it, can't, it can't be a lie and you just label it sovereign and make it better. If God said, whosoever comes to him, he will in no wise cast out. And you come to him and he cast you out, he lied. Well, God's sovereign. God's sovereignty does not permit him to violate his own word. The sovereignty part came in when he gave that word. Now, I know I'm messing up a bunch of uh, sovereignist theology, but folks, let's make sure we get it right. We have to have something we can go to. If we're going to count the thing done, if we're going to be able to go to God and say, what there are things we desire when we pray, believe that we receive them, we shall have them. Amen. 
That wherever we ask in faith, he'll do it for us. The different things about the Bible, about what God said he will do. And the promises he gave us. If we cannot go to him with the assurance that he's going to do what he said he would do, that there's some kind of out for God every time we come called sovereignty, then we will never be able to approach God in faith. Because you won't ever know if you'll really do it or not. Well, that is faith. Trusting God. When you, no, 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 no. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There's no ambiguousness. Ambiguin, I'm trying to say ambiguousness. Is that a word? Amb ambiguity. There's no ambiguity. That, that just, I like making up words. There's no ambiguity with God. With his word, there's no mystery about it. The things he's promised. You understand what I'm saying? I know this one's going to find the scripture. You know, we hold this, 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 this mysteries or these things in earthen vessels. But I'm talking about when, what God promises or a mystery about it. Yeah. When God made a promise, there's not a mystery about him promising that. Right. There are mysteries in the spirit. There are mysteries about heaven. There are other things. But I'm telling you, what God has promised, there's no mystery about it. He didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't an iffy wiffy thing. You didn't, you didn't kind of look at it and go, who serves to call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I wonder who that means. <laughs> Whosoever. Get a little valley girl. valley girl attitude with it. Ever. Anyway. <laughs> Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Well, Lord, I'm coming to you. Your word said, Whosoever shall call, I'm calling on you right now in Jesus' name. And he says, shall be saved. No, I'm God. Change my mind today. I'm not going to keep my word. That's a lie. You can't call God a liar. No. But you did. Because you said, you just call it sovereignty. Which is nothing more than an excuse for God to answer. See, now listen. God's not in on any of this. God said what he meant, meant what he said, and does what he says. Because God's faithful. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not a son of man that he should repent. God's going to do what God said he would do. And God says, if you meet the conditions, I'm going to do it. This is important because, see, when you're there, you can count the thing done. Amen? But there are people who go around and teach people all the time. You know, hey, look. Come on down today, and, and it just might be your day to get saved. How can you give an altar call? It might be your time. I've heard it. I've heard it on television. How can you say that? When the words, it might be. No, 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 no. Today is the day of salvation. If your heart, not your heart. Now listen. God said, what day is the day of salvation? Today. Meaning, whoever will come in faith will receive. Amen. Don't come down here and check it out and see if maybe this is your day or not. The moment you make a decision to follow Jesus Christ and to give your life to him, the word of God says, today is the day of salvation. Right. Not might be, today is. Well, if today is the day and I make that confession, then I get saved today. I don't get to go, well, you never know. God might save me today. You just never know. God might save you today. <clears throat> well, the truth of the matter is, he went to the cross and carried wrote my name in the Lamb's Book of Life already. And if I'll come today, I can make sure it doesn't ever get blotted out. Yeah. Let's just love that. Jesus acted in faith that when he died on the cross, he died for all humanity. And went ahead and wrote everybody's name in the book. Yeah. The Bible does not say that when you get saved, your name gets written down. The Bible talks about those who came whose names were not blotted out. Right. Read that. It talks about the names whose, whose names were not blotted out. What? Who got blotted out? Those who didn't accept what he already did for them. God's a faith God. God did everything by faith. He framed the worlds by faith. God doesn't use faith. What do you think the Bible's all about? They're acts of faith of God. God believed and spoke and created, created things. And, he's wants, and we were created to live that same way, out of that same realm. But trusting his word, trusting what he said, believing what he said, acting on what he said. 
Glory to God. Amen. So when you get saved, your name doesn't get written down. It's already written down. Because he's already expecting you to receive. Now, because you're a free moral agent and free, free will agent, you can determine not to or not to. But he's done all, he, he's, done all he's going to do about it. As far as the actual salvation side, you receive what he's already done. See, that's, God's already made provision for, for everything you have need of. How shall he who spared not his own son, not also with him freely, give us all things? He's already made the provision. Now we count the thing done. Just like Abram changed, his name was changed to Abraham, and he counted the thing done. It was already done. Somebody say glory. glory. Somebody say itababakas, glory, that God speak in tongues. It'll make you speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. So we're going to give glory to God, but we give glory to God by giving him thanksgiving for the answer before we ever see the answer. And then we're going to count the thing. And, no, no, we're going to act, not just count the thing, but act as though we've already received it before we see it. Amen. And the number one way you act, listen, the way you act on receiving it, then there's those two, two sides of this. One is you speak it, you decree it, and you declare it. Another is God may give you specific instructions on to do. Now, if you're taking nitroglycerin tablets for your heart, just going and throwing them in the toilet doesn't mean you're acting on your faith. Now, God may speak to somebody and say, throw those away, you don't need them anymore. They're in their spirit. I'm talking about by the Holy Ghost, not by, not by you know, somebody prophesying of you. I say you need to throw them things away. You, well, listen, you better make sure you know God told you to do it. Okay? Healing can be progressive or it can be instant. You can get it better and better and better. Uh, give an example. Dad, Dad told the story, you know, a number of years ago. Said they had somebody, and, and, and they, were, they were believing God for their eyesight. And the Lord spoke to them and says, get rid of your glasses. You don't need them anymore. They stomped them, and the, and, and the eyes instantly. Somebody else saw that. I believe I got my heel, eyes healed too, and Jesus and took the glass off the stage. Like they had four wrecks, run all over the curb, all over town. They came to him and said, what, what, what's going on here? I, I did exactly. He said, no, the Lord didn't tell you to do that. Said, so now you pray and believe that you receive your healing. And then as, as your eyes get better, then you just get, well, what happened? They start, their eyes started getting better. They had to keep reducing their prescription. And so finally, they didn't need them anymore. Well, you see, God didn't say that everything's going to be instant. As a matter of fact, you studied the healings of ministry, in the ministry of Jesus. Many of them were, they got better as they went. They got better in the same, same hour. Got better the next day. Some were instant. One woman with the issue of blood was the instant, boom, knew in her body that she was healed of her, of her, of her infirmity. They, different things happen instantly, others happen progressively. Amen. Amen. Who cares? Because at the end of it, you have the, they had the full manifestation of the answer. Amen. Amen. You can't copy what, this is how we count, we count the thing done because we, we were thanking God. We're decreeing it with our mouth. We're, 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 I keep saying count the thing done, but I'm trying to say is we act as though we received. So you're acting in your faith, a heart of faith. Now, in that, unless the, unless the Lord gives you specific instructions about certain things, you don't do them. Not taking medicine is not a proof that you have faith. That's not a proof that you, don't, that you have faith. Because you may be amending progressively. And we see in the Bible that even people Jesus laid hands on were mended progressively. They began to amend from that hour. Now, let me give you an example. Remember the, remember the ten lepers that came to Jesus? How many, how many remember those guys? Okay. Came to Jesus, they wanted to be healed. He said, you know, go show yourself to the priest and offer the offering as Moses commanded and as they went, they were healed. Now, what, what was it they were acting as they received? They started on the path to go do what they told them to the priest. When they walked away from Jesus, they weren't healed. 
There was not a manifestation of their healing in their body when they walked away from Jesus. Go study it. And as they went, they were healed. Now, one of them turned around and came back to Jesus. The other one of them did what they supposed to do. They went to the priest. One of them came back to Jesus and began to worship him. He said, where are the, where are the, the nine? You are the only ones returned to, to give thanksgiving. And, you know, and I, I forget exactly what he said. That's therefore, I said, da, 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 da. no, we're not there. All right. And Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Now, the other guys, now, now one of the problems with leprosy is that the nerve endings die. And then people, you know, they bang their hands, they bang all their body parts, you know, just different things happen. And what will end up happening is they get, they get uh, the, the leprosy doesn't actually cause rot in their flesh, but the continual injuries because they can't feel, because the nerve endings are dying and stuff, the continual injuries cause all kinds of problems and, and they, they, they lose extremities and different things and they, they, be, and they really uh, end up in a place of, um, of, of a mutilated state that's pretty nasty. Well, they were they were cleansed. They were healed. In other words, leprosy was the leprosy was healed. But this guy, when he came and worshipped, your face made you whole. It's like a country music song. Played backwards. Got his toes back, his nose back, got his fingers back. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what happens when you turn back and worship Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So, what, but notice that what, the point I was trying to make out of this whole story is this. Uh, whether, or not, whether or not ten cleansed, but whether or not nine, they are not found, but that return to give glory to God, save the stranger. He said, arise, go your way, thy faith hath made thee whole. He didn't, he didn't send him back to the priest. But the whole point of this whole story, if we back up a, couple, a verse here, um, or two, that when Jesus sent them, when they walked away, and, and one of them, when he saw, going back, All right, there we go. And they looked at the voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves to the priest. And it came to pass, as they went, they were cleansed. They acted on his word. They were acting like they received. Going to do exactly what he told them to do. And the cleansing came after they began acting on what he told them to do. It didn't happen while he was standing there. As they went... They lifted up the voices and they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Yeah. And he, remember, um, and he fell down on his face, his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Sometimes people who get, come in contact with God are only serving God have more gratefulness and more thanksgiving to God than Christians do. Yeah. Amen. And Jesus says, Where are the, where, where are the not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? He said, save the stranger, don't look at me and give me glory. He said, go your way, your face made you whole. He got, all, he got everything back. He got whole. He didn't have to go to the priest. Hallelujah. Luke 17, starting about verse 11, going down through 17 or 18. And here's where we, this is, the, this is the point. We have to act like we receive. We start going as if it were so. Didn't say throw your, didn't say, he did not say, he did, he did not say throw your medicine away. He just said, go show yourself to the priest. Go do this. And as they were doing it, the cleansing came. Church, if we'll start acting like we've received without doing stupid stuff. The Word of God says to give him thanksgiving for it. The Word of God, you know, says to say what the, what the Word says. You start saying, thank you, Father, that I've received Oh, I glorify you. I'm, I'm, you know, and we start acting. You know, we make plans. Don't make plans to die. Make plans to live. Amen. How many ever saw the movie? Now, not, Polly, not Pollyanna, the, you know, the Haley Mills early version, but the remake of Polly. Now, just, you know, they had the white version. They had the black version. All right? And, and, and I'm going to be honest with you. The, the movie Polly, uh, the black version, was way better than Pollyanna. I mean, it's just, it's just awesome. I mean, the music's great, but, uh, you know, they got, they got the old, you know, you got, of course, the storyline's still the same. You got the old woman across the river. Um, 
Now, and of course, they, they updated that the old woman across the river was a, was a, was a white woman who, who um, had a fallen out with the old black man on the other side of the river, and somebody burnt the bridge down, and they each blamed each other. They did it. They did it. The white folks did it. The black folks did it because we didn't want us to come together and be unified. And little Polly comes in. She's going to fix everything up. And she, she runs over to the white woman's house, and she's supposed to be over there because she's a white woman, and she burned the bridge down. And she goes in there, and, and she's making plans for her funeral. She's got the guy from the funeral home in there, and he's making plans for her casket, making plans for how to do her funeral. And she, she goes there and, said, and, and grabs something. Else, and she says, oh, honey, I'm just tired and old. I'm, I'm getting ready. And she grabs some scruffy cloth or something that's real burlapy or something and starts rubbing her face. She says, stop, stop. Said, you feel that? She said, yeah, then you ain't ready for the grave yet. <laughs> You're alive. You ain't ready to die yet. See, we, we don't need to be spending all our time preparing to die. We need to be preparing to live. And if you're going <clears> to <throat> have a life, that's it. you need to go, go Polly, Polly. It's not Pollyanna, it's Polly. And it's still a Disney movie, but it's, it's uh, one, of the, one of the Cosby girls was in it. One, one of the, uh, I forget which one. Not Raven, but one of the other ones. And um, she, she was the star when she was little. And it's, it's awesome. Uh, which we looked for it for years, couldn't find finally got They finally released it on DVD a couple of years ago, so we're like, praise the Lord, because we had an old copy off of Disney that was scratchy and, you know, the, the DVD, I mean, the VHS thing and all messed up. <clears throat> but I just love that scene because she rubs her face and says, you're still alive. Yeah. You feel that? Can't you feel that? Why you, why you got this, this, you know, what do they call the guys at the funeral homes? Mortician in here. Planning all your stuff and, you know, and how you're going to be buried and all that stuff. And you're still living. Yeah. Amen? Now, see, let's think about that. She's counting the thing done, getting ready to die. When we're supposed to be counting the thing done to live in the blessings of God. We, we don't think anything of going to the funeral home and making plans for our grave, for our tombstone, for our casket, for what's in it. How we want the funeral done. And all we're doing is we're counting the thing that we're getting ready to die. Nobody thinks twice about that one. They'll say that's good planning. Now, you know I'm telling the truth. But if you turn around, and if you've got a terminal disease, you start making plans to go on a river cruise or to do this, do that, to live and to enjoy life and do that, they'll think you, they ain't ever going to make it. Now, I've got news for you. When Janie, when, when, one of the things we're planning on, when Janie uh, can quit working at GTCC and, and we get to a place where we can do something, uh, we're going to take all of her sick days that she does, you know, when you work for the state, you get a sick day a month. And if you don't use it, you get it all when you quit. We're going to do a Prague to Paris river cruise. She's already got enough to pay for it. Sitting in there in the state's account. Amen. I can't get it. Not until she quits. But when she does, we're going to, Par we're going to Prague, Czech Republic. We're taking a cruise from there to Paris. I'm planning on it. And Nathan, you're not going. It's me and Mommy. Huh? He wants to go to St. Thomas. He wants to go to St. Thomas while we're there. No, you're going you know, to well, you do what you want to do. You ain't going to me. <laughs> I'm going on a second honeymoon. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We're planning on things. Amen. I'm planning on my grandbabies. See, I'm counting. Amen. And I'm counting and I'm acting as it's going to happen. I'm planning on it. <laughs> Done told Jesse, get busy. On some grandbabies around here. <laughs> anyway, where was that before Nathan did the guitar? Yeah. When we go to the Word of God, we have to act that like we've received. Now, we act in accordance with what the Word of God says. Speak it. Give thanksgiving for it. Now, if God in that gives you specific instructions beyond that, do what he tells you to do. But when somebody else is watching you do it, tell them, don't do what I do. Do what the Word says do. God gave me a specific word. You can't, be, you can't act on my word. You have to act on the Word of God. God may give you another word. You act on what he says. We can all act on the written word, but other steps outside of that have to be what God tells us to do, and we know it's God. Not what Sister Prophet said. Because people come up and tell you what God said. 
I believe in prophecy. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. I believe in the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. But I also believe that they need, they need to bear witness to your heart what God's saying and not be your God. You're to marry so-and-so. If that would have worked, Janice and, and, and Jerry had been married 10 years earlier. Because I would have prophesied it to them. But it could be Pastor Ed's word and went in there, well, I'm here and doing it because Pastor Ed said so. It had to be because they knew it. Well, Jerry knew it. Because Janice knowed it. <laughs> Brother Jerry, I love to pick on you. You know. <laughs> this is just one of them good preaching stories. Do you mind? Do you mind? Don't matter, I'm going to do it anyway, but do you mind? <laughs> Hallelujah. No, see, Janice could know, pastor could know, the whole church could know. But until Jerry know, there's no faith. Everybody could be, why ain't you doing this? Why ain't you, why ain't you moving? Because Jerry didn't know. Now, the minute Jerry knew, he went. When he knew, he was sure what God had for him, he, he, he acted on that. But if he had gotten married five years earlier because of what Pastor Ed said, or Janice prophesied to him, the first hard place in the road, there'd be no faith to win. Why? Because he was acting on what somebody else said, not on what the Lord said. And the faith doesn't come by what pastor said. It comes by what the word says. It doesn't come by what your opinion is. It comes by what the word says. It comes by what God says to you. Amen. So even though you may, you know, you can say, well, he, well, why, how can he not know? It doesn't matter how he, why he didn't know at the time. Or this, that. It had to come to a point that it was God speaking in his heart and he knew it was the right thing. So now if a tough, road, tough place in the road comes, he, don't go, he, he can't go and say, well, Lord, I married this woman because Pastor Ed prophesied to me. No. He can look at the devil and say, no, you're going down the road because I know God told me to do this. This is the right thing for me to do. Now am I right now? Mm -hmm. It's a whole lot easier to win the battles and to stay through the tough times when you got the faith that God told you to do that than it is if somebody else told you to do it. Yeah. Then you can stand, you, you can act as though, you can act as though you would see because you know you, God told you to do this. Remember what the Apostle Paul said? That when God spoke to him and told him to do something, he said, I did not confer with flesh and blood. He knew what he was supposed to do. It wasn't, sometimes we want to go get all the flesh and blood to tell us what they think. And there's a lot of flesh and blood out there that wants to tell you what they think because they want to be your Holy Ghost. Now you have a Holy Ghost. Who is he? He's the Holy Ghost. Thank God for counsel and wisdom that comes from the Spirit, and comes from the pastor, and comes from counsel. But let me tell you something, that still has to be the spirit of wisdom and counsel on the pastor or minister who's counseling you so that it's still the Holy Ghost. My opinion don't mean doodly squat. But when it comes out of the spirit and it's the counsel of the spirit, glory to God. Can you say amen? amen. All right. So we're going we're gonna, to uh, act as though we received. Amen. By saying what the word says, walk in accordance with that, and then do anything else that God tells us in line with that. Amen. Glory to God. I know, I know people, people will tell you stuff. And a lot of times they do mean well. But well meaning doesn't produce faith. Follow after God. You'll live in victory. Amen. All right. We just finished. Next week we'll get us, a, we'll start up another uh, sermon or series. We'll just have to see what the Holy Ghost has for us. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. 
If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.